digitizing photo albums was not on my radar until this summer when forest fires got so close to my home that the air outside was difficult to breathe because of the smoke. Charlie and I decided to get ready before we got a notice to evacuate. And guess what was number one on my list? My photos, even though a lot of them were already digitized. But then I saw the row of big, heavy creative memories photo albums on the shelf and realized none of them were digitized. I'm Linda Satgas with FamilyHistoryHero.com and I'm going to share five ways to digitize your old photo albums. After the Oregon fires died down, and thankfully we never did have to leave, I was fired up, no pun intended, to get my photo albums digitized. I started with a set of three 12 by 12 inch photo albums about a trip our family took around the USA back in the 90s. Here are the five methods I explored to digitize them, the advantages and disadvantage of each one, and the method I chose to digitize my albums. Solution number one is to hire a local or online company to scan the pages. On the positive side, a professional does the work for you, which saves you a ton of time and you actually get it done. On the negative side, you have to send your albums away and it can be expensive if you have a lot of photo albums. It'll cost somewhere between one and two dollars per page, but if you'd rather let someone else do it and the cost isn't a problem, this could be a good solution for you. I didn't personally try out this option, but I know other people who have and they were happy with the results. Solution number two is to photograph the album pages. You can hand hold a camera or smartphone, but it's best to use a tripod, which is what I did, and I used a music stand to hold the pages. You'll want to avoid glare by positioning your page properly. I found that having light coming from the left and the right rather than directly onto the page worked the best for me. Then just photograph each page one at a time. On the positive side, if your light is good and your hand is steady or you use a tripod, you can get good photos. There's no additional expense and it gets the job done. On the negative side, the quality of your images will depend on the quality of your camera or cell phone. This image was taken with the most recent iPhone we had in early fall of 2020. Compare that with the same image taken with my almost 10 year old camera and you can see a marked improvement with the camera. You'll also need to crop the photos and your photos are likely to be slightly skewed. I did my best to set up a good photo shoot but all the images taken with a cell phone were still slightly skewed and one edge might also be slightly curved. The biggest problem in my estimation was the control over the size or resolution. If you plan to print these pages at some point, you'll need each digitized page to be 300 pixels per inch if you want to print it the same size it is now without upsizing it. I started out using my iPhone, which is an older model, and it only produced enough pixels for an eight by eight inch book. So I borrowed the newest iPhone at the time, and those only gave me enough pixels for almost 10 by 10 inches, close enough. Now, I didn't test an Android phone, so I don't know those stats, but I did test my trusty 10 year old camera. That gave me a full 12 by 12 inch size and the best image quality. But even if you have a good camera, you still have to remove that slight bit of skew and crop the photos of all your pages. Solution number three is to use an app, either on your phone or on your tablet. On the positive side, the apps generally remove the skew and crop the photo for you, which is great. And an app might have a free version or the paid version may be reasonably priced. This was taken with Unfade Pro, a Mac app. It's also dependent on good lighting. I thought I was in good light here, but the background should be white, so you can see it could use a little bit more lighting. Also, it's quite small compared to a 12 by 12 inch page. That's because the app is on an older iPhone with fewer megapixels. On the negative side, some apps like Photomine recognize the photos on your album page and want to create several individual photo files instead of including the entire page. If that's what you want, then you're good to go. But if you want to photograph the entire album page, it's a problem. And of course, you still have lack of control over the resolution and the quality is only as good as your device. 
Solution number four is to scan the large size album pages four times on a regular scanner to get every part of it scanned with enough overlap and then stitch the pieces together with stitching software. You'll end up with four partial scans of one page. When you open them up in Photoshop or Photoshop Elements, you can use the photo merge option to stitch them together into one file, which is pretty nifty. On the positive side, a regular scanner will give you high quality scans and you have total control over the size and resolution. On the negative side, this is very time intensive and boring. If you plan to do this with scores of photo album pages, you'll need a lot of patience and a lot of time. My final suggestion, solution number five, is to buy or access a scanner that can scan an entire 12 by 12 page in one scan. One of our Family History Hero community members went to a local school and was able to scan oversized pages. I don't know any details about that or if there was a cost. Another member of our community said Heritage Maker Consultants for a digital scrapbooking online company have access to large scanners you can use, and she said the cost is reasonable. I also checked with libraries, family history centers, and local printers, but they either have regular size scanners or the scanners weren't suitable for photos. However, one of our Family History Hero community members said she was using a large format plastic scanner that scans and automatically crops the photo. Here's what she said about it. I'm very, very happy with the results I'm getting. The extra large scanner lets me do a full oversized page in one scan, which saves my sanity. And reducing my stack of 80 or so albums down to something manageable is saving my sanity too. Well, the idea of saving my sanity sounded really good. What if I could scan my three albums quickly and not have to crop and fix the skew? That would save me a huge amount of time and frustration. So I looked into it and there are two versions of the Plustec scanner that would work with albums. I ended up ordering the Plustec Optic Slim 1180 that retails for around $350, the one my friend has. But after I contacted the company to ask a question and they found out I was going to do a review of it, they gave me the chance to try out the Plustec Optic Pro A320L that retails for around $800. So let me give you a quick impression of the Plustec scanners and then in my next video, which you'll find a link to below this video, I'll give a full review and compare the two so you can make a better decision if you decide to go that route. This time I'll start with the negative. I found their scanner software and documentation to not be very intuitive. I had to chat with customer service to figure out a good scan setting. On the positive side, the Plustech chat and customer service were both excellent. They had me up and running quickly and answered all my questions. And a company rep told me that an updated version of the software is in the works. The scanning experience itself has been amazing. At one point when I was working on my three albums of our trip around the USA, 145 pages, it actually felt euphoric, like, like I was having fun. And I don't think I've ever felt that way before about scanning. I don't generally think of scanning as a fun experience, but I was scanning my pages one after the other, playing loud 70s music and singing along without having to even think about what I was doing or even where I was placing the page on the scanner as long as it was lined up against one side. There's no skewing because it's a flatbed scanner and it automatically crops every page. I got the first album done in about 40 minutes, so all three albums took less than three hours. So for me, this was the option I chose. If you're interested to find out more and want to know the difference between the two models and my tips for setting up the software, click on the link below in the description to watch my review of the two Plustic scanners. I want to mention one last idea I had when I looked into purchasing the Plustic scanner. I checked out the price of new models and also looked into buying a used Plustic scanner on eBay. To my surprise, I only found a few listed for sale and the price was comparable to buying it new. That gave me the idea to just buy a new one and then resell it after I was done using it. I could offer free shipping and a little bit of a discount and still recoup most of my investment. That would make scanning my photo albums very cost effective. So that's what I was planning to do, but now that I have one, I don't want to get rid of it. I like it. 
and I can see the benefit of keeping it to scan other large items and even memorabilia. So those are the five ways you can get your old photo album scanned. The most important part, choose one and get it done before it's too late. I'm Linda Satgast with FamilyHistoryHero.com where you can learn how to turn your dusty old boxes of photos into easy to share family stories.